Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Contact Form Helper plugin. And today I have some exciting news. It's version 1.5 of the plugin. And at my best count, we're up to about 93 features in this plugin. And it's about the one year anniversary of when we released it. So I'm excited to show you everything that's new and hopefully if you're not familiar with this plugin, you get familiar with it soon because it's really popular and it's amazing how many people are enjoying these features. So the best place to get all the information about what's new in version 1.5 is on the blog post. I'll have that linked in the description if you're coming from YouTube. We're just gonna take it one thing at a time here and go down through as they come in the blog post. Now, some of the things that I mentioned in the blog post and these major version updates actually have been added in like smaller updates. So like some of these things may have been in 1.4.1, okay? But it needs to be announced. If it's a new feature, we announced it. If it's just a bug fix or something like that, we don't really announce it as much. It's in the change log. But for new features, we like to cover everything at the next major update. So here we go. Confirmation email from name. Now some of these I can't really show you much because they're just little input fields and it's like you gotta just, yeah. So confirmation email from name. When you get the confirmation, you go to a website and fill out a form. Now you get an email. Hey, thanks for filling out the form. We'll get back to you soon. The from na name, can you can change that to be like Nelson at PA Creative, whatever it is and then when I get that email in my inbox, that's who it says it's from, rather than like just the default uh, website name. Also, the confirmation email from email address, meaning instead of getting it from, you know, um, nelson at pacreative.com, I could put in whatever address I want. Like you can put in whatever you want for the, for the person to receive it as the from email address and name. The same thing with the admin. So we added this also, the from name. So for the admin email, it's like a notification, right? So you, someone filled out a form on your site, you wanna know about it and it can say, new message from, and that's in the subject, but the from name itself, um, not the subject line, but the from name, you can have whatever you wanna say there. And you could even say, um, use a merge tag to put like the name of the person. So it's from Nelson even though it's like, it's not the subject line, but it looks like, hey, Nelson sent me this email. It's the person who filled out the form. Okay, use submitter email address as the from email address. We got this request and it's a little bit specific and you probably won't really need it, but so if you want, you can actually use the email address of the person who submitted the form as the from email address for the admin email. I know this is a lot of, terminology, but we're going to keep moving. Spam protection, blacklisted emails. Now you can go to the back end of your website. All right. So Divi theme options, then click on Divi contact form helper. Here's some things you may notice. We've rearranged some things and updated some tabs here, but the one you're looking for here, spam protection, blacklisted emails. So basically here you can put in the domains or actual email addresses of anyone who you want to blacklist. So like at some domain.com because you're getting a lot of spam from that domain. We'll just put it in this list and make sure that you add a comma. They're separated by commas. So something domain.com, comma, something else, email address, comma. And then whichever ones are in here, they'll submit the form, but it won't do anything. It won't send an email to you and it won't go in the database. All right. So you're blacklisting it. All right. So we're jumping to the front end. Show labels on the left side, and I'm not even gonna show you. I'll just show you the screenshots. It's so much easier right now. In the module, you're gonna have this new option. When you show the label on the front end, which is again, is a feature in our plugin, showing that label above the field. Now you can show it on the left side of the field. Here you can see I've done it. I think I set the width to like 180 pixels or something. And you may wanna make that where it's all the fields are in a row like that. Now, of course, Keep in mind, you're gonna to have to make each field full width. By default, like the name and email are like half width. So you gotta go in, set it to full width and all that too. So make sure you do that. But anyway, it's just a little feature. Some people wanted that and it's interesting. Here's a good one. Auto delete entries after time. Now, I think this applies to 
GDPR, I think. Automations is a new tab. So auto delete entries, if you enable that, check this out. I can choose what type of entries I want to auto delete. Do I want to delete just the, those that are read or unread or just like ones in the um, trash? Basically, it's, it's going to remove them from your database. So delete entries after number of days. Well, let's just say 14 is my sweet spot. After 14 days, so yeah, if I get an email, you know, um, January 31st, by February 14th, it's going to be gone. It's not in the database anymore. So obviously use that carefully, um, but if it's like where you cannot store their data in the database and you have to delete it after a certain period of time, there you go, we've, we've added that feature for you. Show or hide a success message. Yeah, believe it or not, that was never an option. So now you can just say, I don't want there to be a success message. One of the reasons we added this is because someone was using a redirect. So they fill out the form and then it redirects. But for a little bit of time, it was showing the success message. And so we thought the best way to do that is literally to disable the function of it. So if you're not using the success message, now you can turn it off. If you're using it, well, then we have a lot of features in there. We have merge tag support and short code support and all that in the success message. But anyway, we'll keep moving. Loading icon when the form is submitting. So someone comes, clicks submit. I wonder if it's doing anything. Now you can know because there's going to be that little spinny thing that you like a little, you know, loader GIF thing when the form is submitting. So it's just one of those things like, you know, these little features that we're sneaking in here is like so much fun because user experience, right? User experience. That's going to really help because someone won't be like, click, click, what's going on? Why am I form submitting? Because they're going to be like, ah, oh, it's submitting. Oh, good. There it went. You know, anyway, date and time format for entries and merge tags. So basically like you have a merge tag where it says date and time and all that stuff. Now you can change the format and that's actually in here too. Miscellaneous tab right here. Look at that. You can change the format for the entries and the, the merge tags. So date and time formats, nice little things there. Choose the default selected option for a select dropdown list. So yeah, when you make a list of dropdowns, so you have like three options in your dropdown, you want one to already be selected. That's not a feature in Divi. You can do it for the checkboxes and radio buttons in Divi, but you can't for the dropdown. Now you can do it with the dropdown with our plugin. Okay. <laughs> Start and end date for the CSV export. That's nice. So now when you're doing the export in there, you're going to your contact form, export CSV. Now I can say, well, you know, what's the date range that you want to export? And then you can pick your dates, you know, right here. Pretty cool, I think. Really great feature. That way, like, if you are exporting every month or, or you know, like, oh, I want to export these that I received after this campaign, you know, you can select the form and then select the dates, and then you'll get just those. Save URL parameters in the database. So if you're doing some marketing campaigns and all that, and if you're not, you may have sometimes noticed like the URL has all these crazy things in the URL. That's just tracking you, um, saying like where you came from, what you clicked and all that stuff. Did you click in an email newsletter and then you came to this page and all that stuff. If you want to track those parameters, now you can. You can turn on the setting in the module. Um, you can also save those as merge tags. So we've added these as merge tags. So what you would want to do is like this percent percent parameter percent percent just like the other merge tags except you would literally put your parameter name in there okay like in your in the admin message so um yeah allowed times per day of the week now we did have available and unavailable times this is for the date and time picker we did have just the available times unavailable times and they were global but then people were like well i have these hours on tuesday and these hours on wednesday and these hours on thursday i'm like oh yeah <laughs> And so now we've literally like made all of these settings. It's like repetitive, but it's like available time Sunday, unavailable time Sunday, and then for every day. These will override the global. So if you set the if you set the global ones, then you set one from Monday, the Monday will override the global. Okay. Now we come to the end. And 
if you're using some kind of like booking like I think like Airbnb and these um, Verbo and all those that use like booking calendars where you're literally booking something. Now in the date and time picker, we've added this ICS calendar. So it's like an Al iCal format. Um, it's basically a universal standard format for calendars. And you can do this in Outlook or Google Calendar. And you can go in their settings and create a URL so like when you have meetings or you have events and all these things in your calendar, if you synchronize that URL now, like in the settings here, like in this screenshot, you add the URL, you go to your calendar, like Google Calendar, and you, you get the URL for that. It's a special URL for this purpose. You paste it in here. Now it's going to synchronize the available dates and times in the module. So if you have a calendar and you say, please pick a date to um, arrive at your campsite, you know what I mean, a hotel room, whatever, or appointment, uh, whatever it is. If you have that already p selected in your Google Calendar, that date and time will now be unavailable to select in Divi, in the contact form, in the picker. Now, we say this is in beta because there's so many scenarios with this and there's it's very technical. I'm calling it beta just to, just for um so you don't get upset if something doesn't work because it's so many variables. Please give us grace if something isn't working. If you need this feature, go ahead and try it. Try it on a test site, play around with it and let us know how it goes. Um, you know, if there's an issue with it. So again, we're going to call it beta until we feel more confident. In it, and it's an awesome feature. It's a, it's a very premium. You should be paying so much more, like double or triple our plugin cost for this, and we have not raised the price at all. So anyway, we have other bug fixes and things, and yeah, you can check those things out in the change log. I have this feeling that I forgot some things. I don't know why, but anyway, go check it out. Like I said at the beginning, I think we're up to like 93 features. It's crazy. And it's only been like a year and I'm telling you what, we have a huge list for, um, in our development and our project management toll, a huge list of features that you have requested and things that we've thought of that we want to do. Um, and it just takes a lot of time to get to some of them. Some are priority, some are less priority, but they're all like intended to eventually happen. Um, we never thought that this plugin would become this huge form plugin like it is and be so popular and it's just blowing our minds um and like i said we haven't raised the price at all so i hope you appreciate that if you do um leave us a review that would be awesome wherever you purchased it whether on our website or on divi marketplace leave us a review that's always really really helpful and we hope you enjoy this update let us know all right we'll see you in the next video